So you may be asking why are there coolers on the floor of our trailer? And that's because our fridge is on the fritz. Now this fridge has never actually worked properly since the day one we got it. There was even times in the wintertime we were joking it's better to put our food outside because it was colder outside than it was in our refrigerator. So we've been monitoring the problem and I took my uh, weather station here that shows the temperature inside the trailer and then the outdoor temperature there that you can read is 62. That's actually the temperature inside the refrigerator. The remote sensor is inside the fridge and we've been watching it for a couple of days now to see what's been happening. Granted, it is hot outside. It's about 111, 112, so that's pretty toasty. But um, our air conditioning working great. You can see it looks like we got it down to 73 overnight, and the hottest it's been today is 83. But the refrigerator temperature, the coldest it got was 51, and it got all the way up to 68. So that is not adequate for food and not going to work. So we have contacted Dometic, and they have finally agreed that we might have a problem and they're going to authorize a service guy to come out and take a look and see what's going on and see if we can get this fridge fixed and um, hopefully we can get it so that we don't have to keep all of our food in an ice chest because that's a real pain it's fun for camping for a few days but not going to work for long-term RV life because we're spending a fortune or a small fortune in bags of ice from Walmart all right, let's see, he's scheduled for Wednesday, so hopefully he comes out and we can fix this problem and see what's going on. Latest on the fridge saga, we had James from Happy House come out today and he agrees with us there is a problem with the fridge. He is gonna get Dometic to warranty the cooling unit on the back of the fridge, which is basically an entirely new refrigerator. Um, and at the same time as he's having the refrigerator pulled out to do all that work, we're going to supercharge or set the refrigerator up for extreme conditions. You're going to fill all the voids around the outside of the refrigerator with insulation and foam packing, as well as add a fan that will help duct the heat that the fridge produces up out of the vent in the ceiling. So that's what the fridge looks like pulled out. And this is our modification that we did to help supercharge the refrigerator for hot weather. So this is the cavity where the refrigerator was. It's a big mess right now. But we pulled out the really wispy, regular insulation and we've inserted this thicker foam insulation here, you can see, get a lot more thickness out of it. And padding the walls here. The main thing that we did as well is there's this piece of flashing that's been added. This was just a big cavity up on top here that stored hot air. So we've added foam insulation underneath this and then this piece of flashing that curves up and is gonna curve right up into the vent that's right there. And then, well, we've added that fan that you kind of see there is going to help duck the hot air up out of the vent on the top of the roof of the refrigerator. So all these things should make a huge difference. And as well, this board has now got insulation behind it, and it had nothing behind it. So it was just another big air cavity that was creating hot air. And while the refrigerator is getting worked on inside there, we've chased everybody out. So the girls are out here getting sun. At least one of them is. One's in the sun, one's in the shade. <laughs> Got the mister going. Doesn't look like it's working very well on you. And got the teenager doing the teenager thing. Headphones. <laughs> and a cell phone. Oh, we even got the teenage eye roll and everything in there. There's some mister on you. Woo. Nice. All right, back to work. So this is the foam that we used to insulate the refrigerator. It's just, uh, got it from Lowe's, it's like 20 bucks, 29 bucks, I think it was. And then cut it all down to size. It's, it's big sheets, it comes in big sheets, like four by eight sheets. It's really lightweight, but foil on one side, foam on the other, really easy to work with. Just use like a little hacksaw to cut it up. And then just cut all the pieces to fit. I got different thicknesses. That's what we use to insulate the inside and then put some metal flashing over it to help protect from uh, the flame and then duck all the heat up out of the top. Uh, the way that we're going to install this new cooling unit, um, it uh, is a much better installation than the OEM or the factory installation. Always is. Um, as you can see, there is no putty or thermal putty installed on the uh, old cooling unit, so uh, the new one is going to get that, the heat conductive thermoelastic putty. Then uh, 
We're also going to completely seal the unit by spraying expanding foam in around the edges here, all into here, all around these edges, and that's going to completely seal the cooling unit off. That way, no cool can leak out from the back of the unit. All right, so it actually stays cold like it's supposed to? Yeah, it certainly will. Okay. Here's the big mess we got going on in here. There's the refrigerator on its face. We got James putting some uh, sealant foam inside there. So they have warrantied the whole cooling unit in the back. That's what's sitting up there. And we're replacing that. And it looks like the original cooling unit didn't have any uh, coating on it. What is it that you called it? It's a thermal elastic uh, heat conductive thermal elastic putty. Thermal elastic putty. Cool stuff, but it didn't have anything on the cooling coils. So it was dissipating heat, dissipating cold too quickly, which was probably causing not most of our problem. Look at all that gooey he's putting in there. It's a whole new cooling unit going in on the back. So that is the hole where our refrigerator normally is. You can see it inside there. James is working on putting the new cooling unit on the back of it. And over here is our old cooling unit. Here it is here, which we believe was defective. And one of the big things James noticed when he took it off is that there was no thermoelastic putty on some of the cooling coils on the back. They're actually on the other side of this, and I want to lift it up because he's put it here for a reason. But without that thermoelastic putty, I guess it doesn't dissipate the heat or doesn't hold the cold, one of the two as well, and so it makes it very inefficient. So a very similar situation to what we had with the air conditioning is in the rush to manufacture these. It's not that it doesn't work, it just doesn't work very efficiently. And so when you get into any kind of temperatures above 95, 100 degrees, your refrigerator is not going to work. So by doing the thermoelastic putty, and then there's some more insulation here we even have that we're going to add today, and even the other insulation and the fans that we've added here that you saw in the other shot, is all what is going to radically improve the cooling capacity of this refrigerator. So after all that hard work and mess, the numbers don't lie, 38 degrees inside our refrigerator. And it's really a good thing because now it means we can use the refrigerator where before we couldn't. It's not a perfect test because it's cooled off a bit outside. It's 101, 102, but you can see the minimum and maximum temperature over the night there. Uh, so it actually got down to 33 inside the fridge and then 45 It was the, the warmest it got. So that's a big difference from where we were before, where basically the refrigerator was worthless and uh, not usable. We'll have to see how it goes over time. Watch what happens as we move and uh, with propane and stuff. This is still running on power, but um, hopefully now we won't have to use the cooler to keep our food in. We can just use the cooler to keep drinks in.